Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the history about Norse mythology and I said I was going to talk about this in a previous video in my Lucky Figures video if anyone watched it um, because I was mentioning all the weapons and the actual names behind them on the Lucky Figure. Um, Obviously I try and make this as short as possible because I don't want to bore people because I did do one in my channel about Norse mythology and it went into more depth um, and it, I don't know if people watched it, not many people watched it and I think it's because I it can drag on and I don't want to make it too long today um, for you guys so basically um, Norse mythology is kind of um, talking about Thor and Loki and all the gods in the, in the films, from the four films. And basically these people were like Scandinavian Viking people um, and they lived in them times. Um, they used to travel from ship. They used to travel ship to ship to different places um, as well. So I'm just going to mention a bit about the Nine Realms and mention some of the gods and goddesses of Norse mythology and probably go into depth into the weapons because I've got this book on my Kindle which is about the Norse mythology. Um, what I wanted to do was try and get a book with Norse mythology, like a big massive paperback book of Norse mythology because I've seen people with them and they sort of sort of read it out to you like different parts but I'm not, I'm only going to read some of like the Nine Realms to you and the God and Goddesses and explain to you in more depth because I don't want to make this a long video. So, the Nine Worlds of Norse mythology and the first Nine Realm is Asgard, sometimes referred to as Asgore, which is not Norwegian. That it has 540 halls, one of which belongs to Odin. Odin's hall is called Velaskaljath, and it stands out even among the other great dwellings because of its pure silver roof. Some sources say that the entire building was made of silver. The throne is called Hiddle Skulljith. I can't pronounce Norwegian names, so if I can't pronounce it very well, I apologise. And when Odin sits in it, he can see over the entire world. On the far side is a rainbow bridge called Bifrost, which allows the gods' passage to the world of men. The gods made a bridge from earth to heaven and called it the Bifrost. Thou must sh surely have seen it, but perhaps thou's call it the rainbow. Their heroes will pass through Asgard on the way to dwell in Valhalla Hill. Valhalla, sorry, Thunderhelm, the place of might, is also located here, and this is where you will find Thor when he is not busy. Just an inside joke there. Um, so basically, Asgard. I'll explain in more detail from the writing. It's basically a realm in which the gods and goddesses live, the like Thor, Malachi, and Odin. And they have this Yggdrasil tree which has sprouts of branches that all connect to a bifrost, like to this front room. Because in the four films, there's like a big circle and there's a drazzle tree with branches on either side and then that all connects to the nine realms um, and there's also a bifrost in there which makes the heroes travel to another realm in the movies so a lot of that's mentioned in the movies as well um, the next realm is Muspelheim home or Muspel in the second of these worlds considered to be above the earth this is the land of pre-mortal fire ruled by the evil fire giant Sot Black who guards the entrance of the blazing sword. Sot 
has burning hair and is covered in glowing lava and has little to do in Norse mythology until the end of the world. And the end of the world is basically Ragnarok. In the films, the end of the world is basically Ragnarok. And there is this fire demon in the end of, in the first half of Ragnarok in for Ragnarok. And he basically plays a part in the end of the world because they believed there was going to be an end of the world. They called it Ragnarok, where it was and I think in there is the end of the film for Ragnarok, the actual Asgard does blow up in flames. And they believe this guy would be standing there with his blazing sword and would everything would blow up in flames and you knew it was the end, basically. So the next film is a health home. I don't know how to pronounce this. Um, the home of the light elves. These are the beautiful and youthful minor gods of nature and fertility, considered to bring inspirations in the spheres of art and music, and ruled by the major god Freya. Freya. Sorry, I'm saying it like a Chinese person. Freya, sometimes mocked and described as puny because of their lightness and luminosity, they can easily punch above their weight as they're highly skilled in the art of magic. So that's basically the light elves who live there. And Midgard, sometimes called um, Manahal, or the world of humans. The entire world is encircled by the evil serpents, Jormungand, who stabilises his hold by biting his own tail. The Bifrost, the Rainbow Bridge, ends in Midgard. And the next one is Vanaholm, and it is also the home of the Varn, the Varna, who are gods, but a particular group separate from the Aesir. These Vanaha are particularly associated with philosophy, wisdom and the ability to see into the future. But yep, so that's that. And the next one is the last earthbound world is of Jutenheim, which is where the Jutens or the giants live. This is the realm of the Jutens or the giants, so known as Itins. It is a cold place, flat around the edges of rocky and mountainous, with overgrown wild forests towards the interior. There are frost or rime giants, ice giants, mountain giants and storm giants. They are between 20 to 30 feet tall, strong with flesh and bone, density three times as of humans. They are vulnerable to heat and function best in their own environments. The giant god Mimmer's well of wisdom is placed here. So that's basically um, Jutenheim, or however it's pronounced in Norwegian, because I don't speak Norwegian, is a place in where Loki was brought up from, because Loki is a Jutin and an ice giant, sort of, and he was adopted by Odin and Frigga in the movies. But obviously, this is kind of Priya, not the movie. It's this is kind of like, you know, they weren't brothers in the actual Norse mythology. It was kind of like enemies in a way. Like, they are in the film, but they have that love-hate relationship in four, where they hate each other and they love each other and they're brothers. So it's kind of different. They changed it because it was basically based upon the comics as well. So... Um, oh, you also have other ones too. I forgot about these ones, sorry. Um, uh, so, about the Harlem, the world of the Dark Elves. These creatures hate the light and the sun, and will turn to stone if exposed to either. They annoy and threaten humans a great deal. Many of the nightmares are by haunting animals. This may also be where the dwarves... Oh sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. 
Hit the light and sun and turn the stone exposed to either they know for it. Humans are great, they're mainly via nightmares by haunting animals. And then the next is Nivedi Yavirul. I don't know how to say this. Nivada Velora. This is where most sources pop the realm of the dwarves. The dwarves play a vital beloved part in Norse mythology, mainly because they are such excellent craftsmen. And finally, there is Niflheim, the place of mists and the coldest and most hospital world. Here is located the well of Hevelgoma, which means bubbling or bubbling spring, boiling spring. And obviously, um, Hevelgoma is guarded by the dragon Nidorhog, and it is a point. It is the point from which all living proceeded and to which our living will return. So that's basically all the nine realms. So here's all the major gods and goddesses now that we go on to. <sighs> that we go on to now. Sorry, my foot is going dead, guys. So if you see me moving it, it's because of that, because I've been laying on it. Um, so the first, there's a lot of gods here. So, it's mentioned this. I'll read some, I'll read the, the main gods out to you on this. Um, hopefully, this isn't as long as I thought it was going to be. So, the first god is Auden, who in the films, Auden is the protector of the Night Elves and is actually king of like the entire Asgard in the films but this is in Norse so Odin is the main and key god in Norse mythology not to put too fine a point on it he said I call myself Grim and Gala Galangla lie here in Halmbera and then this is basically Norwegian names um Oscar God of Wishes All Majesty's High and it mentions a lot of names of thought, logic and poetry. He is often referred to as the All Father. So that's Odin. That's all I want to mention from that. Um, and four in the films is um, he's the son of Odin. So he's actually Odin's actual son. But in Norse mythology, like I said, Loki and Thor are not brothers. They're... Loki in the Norse mythology kind of becomes a council person. It's kind of complicated. You have to read into it though. He kind of becomes part of the council in the Norse. So. But he's still the same Loki where he's god of mischief and all this. He's still the same Loki though. So Thor was Odin's son and is somewhat more spectacular in appearance, the god of thunder and lightning, also of the sky, fatality and law and order. Thor had a bushy red beard, a huge appetite and a quick temper, but his abouts of anger would be here and gone in a flash. He is also depicted with these items in the possession, a magic belt, Mingengarland, Gargid, can't say it, that's Norwegian, Shovels his strength, his hammer called Majorna. It's Majornia in the films, but I don't know how you pronounce it in Norwegian. No. And the iron gloves he needed to wield the weapon. And it basically mentions a lot about Thor and Loki, them not being brothers in it, and there's tales. In, there's actually like tales, proper tales that I've read from the Norse mythology where fallen monarchy didn't get on and there was kind of like enemies but they became friends through it. Kind of like a brother relationship but there was kind of like friends and they didn't like each other and then they liked each other. And there's these little tales that if I can find them somewhere I'll try to read them, some of them out to you but they're really funny and cool. Um, Balbador, the bright one, was another of Odin's sons, one of, from his marriage to Frigga, and a very different person compared to Thor. He was the god of light, love, reconciliation, and radiance, and was very beautiful to behold. 
He was married to Nana, the goddess of joy. And then we get on to Loki. It's surely the most puzzling of the Norse gods. He is neither an Isa nor a Vanna, but was the race of elementals called Intins and was originally their god of fire. He was actually the son of a giant, but he tricked his way into becoming Odin's blood brother. He was known as a shapeshifter, a trickster, the sky traveller and the father of lies. He married Glot Glo, who bore him two daughters, Elsa Embers, and in Mara Ashes he also coupled with the giant race Agnabordia and produced three monsters, Hel, the goddess of dead, Jumungand, the great serpent who encircles Midgard, and Ferri, who are Fenris, the wolf, with his wife, third wife. I can't pronounce this, but this is his wife in Norse. Zingli, he had two children, Val, the and Nafi, who would later have a hand in the capture. And obviously Loki goes on to say he was looking and charming like he was in the films because he, Loki is the god of mischief and he's full of charm and wit. He's also um, a misunderstood person in the films but yeah it's pretty much the same in the Norse. Then we have Freya is the most beautiful Norse goddess. She presides over love, fertility, lust, war, battle, wealth and death. So it will not surprise you to know that she also leads the Valkyries. Yes, the Valkyries um, are these people that um, work alongside Asgard. And then um, there's a Valkyrie in Afro Ragnarok, I think, who's called, uh, I can't remember her name now. It won't come to me now, but it'll come to me later. But there's a Valkyrie in um, for Ragnarok and she basically has the Valkyrie tattoo on her arm and she's Thor doesn't know she's a Valkyrie until later on just thinks she's a scrap person and she just delivers all these people to the Grand Master and gets paid for it so and it mentions Freya as well um, and obviously there's other gods and goddesses as well that I haven't mentioned but I won't go into the more detail. I'll go into more detail on maybe a second part if I can or when I get the chance to. But that's pretty much the history behind it. Um, like I've read most of the stuff behind it so if you want a part two to this video please let me know in the comments below and I'll try and do a part two and basically explain a bit more of the other gods and goddesses. I know there's Frigga and I haven't mentioned yet and some others um, which I will get to around doing because um, I don't want this to be really long than it is, it probably is now. But I hope you enjoyed this video guys and you liked me reading some of the Norse mythology and explaining a bit more in depth about it. Obviously I want to try and mention the weapons in um, because they're, they're actually said in Norwegian and I was looking up the actual spear, the exact spear of Loki that he uses in the films and I was looking up in Norwegian and to see how you pronounce it and I think I know how to pronounce it so try to go on Google Translate and tell you how it's pronounced and then I'll say it. Um, I don't know Norwegian very much, it's, you know, a very like hard language. I'm not Norwegian because they kind of was Norwegian Viking in the Norse mythology. But hope you enjoyed this little ramble and this little reading session. Hopefully I will do either a part two to this or I'll do something else tomorrow. But I hope you enjoyed the video nonetheless. And have a nice Monday today. And I will see you all guys in the next video. Goodbye.